Hi pals, I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the books I have acquired in the last few weeks. And I say weeks, it's really been a lot of books for the small amount of time that um, has passed. But some of them are, well, a small number of them are library books. Um, but most of them are either books I've bought new or second hand. Um, I was fortunate enough, it was my birthday, I was fortunate enough to get some vouchers um, for both new and second hand sort of book buying places um, and so I have managed to acquire some new goodies for my shelf which I'm very excited about um, and so I wanted to share them with you and yeah see if you've read any of them and um, if you have let me know what you thought and whether or not I should kind of bump them up my TBR pretty soon but yeah I'll start with the books that I have got uh, new copies of um, for no particular reason apart from that they are the nearest to me. Um, some of these you might have seen if you watched my vlog that I did recently. Um, it's kind of like a month long almost in the end, um, a September vlog. Um, but there's also quite a few that I didn't feature in that vlog. So one of the ones I didn't feature was called Incredible Journeys by David Barry. And this is exploring the wonders of animal navigation, which is not really something I would typically like reach for, but I have become more interested in like nature, writing and nature, kind of reading about nature in general. And here it says, David Barry takes us on a global tour of the cutting edge science of animal navigation and reveals how animals large and small, including humans, find their way around. And um, it just sounded really, really fascinating. And I also thought to myself, this sounds like something that Chris will really enjoy. And so that was in the end, one of the reasons I pushed to put it in my basket sort of thing, um, because I thought, well, if I can read a book, enjoy it, and also pass it on to someone else who I think will enjoy it, then that's extra bonus for me. So that's the first one. Speaking of books uh, that, to do with Chris, Chris bought me this one for my birthday, The Far Traveller, Voyagers, Voyages of a Viking Woman by Nancy Marie Brown. This is about a Viking woman who travels across, um, she sails off the edge of the known world and she travels to the new world um, and lived there for three years giving birth to a baby before sailing home or so the Icelandic sagas say and Nancy Marie Brown sort of goes and researches this Viking woman's story um, to see like I guess how much truth there is and to kind of understand what that journey might have been like I guess. It sounds fascinating and I was so impressed that Chris found this and chose it for me for my birthday. Um, it just sounds like really up my street. I love like history books and like anything to do with history really. Um, and yeah, I love the idea of this. And obviously it's got a tie to Iceland, which is always, always a bit of a win in my book. So yeah, I've got that one as well, which is very exciting. Another one that Chris got me for my birthday is Small Bodies of Water by Nina Menga Powells. Um, he bought this on my kind of suggestion, shall we say. Um, and it's all about kind of place and home and belonging and the connection of that to water, I believe, um, and obviously I haven't read it, and again it's nature writing, so um, I think it's going to be lovely, especially like in the sort of more, maybe even in the autumn, maybe this will be one I pick up soon, um, I'm just thinking when the outside weather is doing all kinds of stuff, sometimes just retreating with a quiet little book just be lovely. I loved uh, Tiny Moons by Nina Minga Powells and that was one of the reasons as well. I was keen to get this as soon as it came out um, and I have a lovely hardback to enjoy. So um, that's another. I also got Game of Cones by Abby Collette, um, which I treated myself to and it is a cosy mystery novel. I think it's the second in a series. I read the first one uh, via my library and really liked it so I thought why not pick up the next one and I wasn't sure whether or not my library would end up buying the next one in. Um, but yeah, I thought it was the perfect level of like coziness and mixed with a little bit of mystery. And it's set around an ice cream shop. I don't know if I said that already, but it's set around an ice cream shop and it just sounded really good. So um, that's a win. And then I also bought myself Duck Feet, which is by Eli Percy, um, a Scottish writer. And this is written all in Scots. I have been curious about this since I was like hosting Scottish Readathon last year, um, which will be coming up again this year if you're interested. Um, in November, it's a week long readathon. I need to get my skates on and get organised as I'm filming this video. Um, but hopefully, by the time that you see this, I will be making moves to get that organised. But yes, so this is written on Scots, and um, I discovered Eli Percy as a writer 
during Scottish Readathon, or I think, or maybe just before, when I was looking for Scots language writing online, and I wrote a blog post about Scots language writing, and there's a chapter that features in this book that was published online beforehand. Um, so I can link that blog down below for you if you want to have a look at it. But yeah, this is set in Renfrew and Paisley in Scotland, and it follows a 12-year-old girl who's kind of navigating high school life. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting because I remember being 12 years old in Scotland and um, the kind of things that I was experiencing, I'll be interested to see if this character experiences similar things or what happens in their life. Um, and yeah, just I guess it's just always lovely for me, uh, especially as, as a Scottish immigrant living abroad, to read Scottish stories. I really enjoy them um, and they just give me a little taste of home. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I might even pick up for Scottish Readathon or during Scottish Readathon if I don't get to it beforehand. Now for the biggest book on my TBR, maybe ever, but certainly um, from this uh, book haul. Um, it's an absolutely huge book. It's called New Daughters of Africa. I think it's about 900 pages um, and it's really, really long. But it is an anthology of writing from women of African descent and there are some lots of names in here which I'm sure you will recognise, such as Rennie Edolodge, Jasmine Ward, Iwande Omotoso, Essie Adudjan, um, and several, Roxanne Gay, um, sorry I'm just sort of skimming the list, but there are several, several writers in there which I'm certain you will recognise their names. I've heard a lot of love for this book and I really want to kind of give it a go myself. Sorry if it's getting darker in here, the room feels darker. Um, I'm trying to capture the last of the, the daylight of the day, but um, yeah, hopefully it won't get too dark. I've got a, a fake light on, so hopefully that will keep us going. Um, and then I also, Chris got me this one, this one, Chris, one of the ones that Chris got me. Um, it's called Happily Ever After and Everything In Between. It's by Debbie Tung and um, she's written several graphic novels, which I've heard good things about them all. But um, I just kind of gave Chris the option of which one to choose and he chose this one. It's about a long-term relationship and um, just kind of like the little moments in a long-term relationship and stuff like that. Um, and it just is supposed to be joyful, adorable, lovely, funny. It just sounds like such a treat and I'm hopeful that I'll enjoy it so much that I'll want to read it again and again because graphic novels, of course, are just such a luxury to actually own. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. I then bought myself also, um, actually neither, this one wasn't on, this was just one that I seen. Um, it was on like some kind of two for 2,800, which is roughly like two for, I don't know, about 14 quid or something like that. So it works out about the price of the actual book in the UK. Um, <laughs> but usually books in Iceland are a lot more expensive. Um, so this was like quite a big bargain. But anyway, it's called Becoming Dina and it's by Kit Dewal who wrote My Name is Leon, which I really, really loved when I read it earlier this year. Um, and this is another YA about a young woman and she goes on a road trip with a neighbour and I think it's kind of about like a coming of age story. So I am looking forward to that. I think it's going to be interesting to see how Kit Duval creates this new character. I felt like the character of Leon was so well developed in My Name is Leon and like so beautifully constructed the kind of narrative and his storyline was so like delicately told and like told so well um, and so I'm curious to see what Dina, I'm not sure if it's Dina or Dinah, um, but I'm curious to see what her story will be and yeah looking forward to kind of getting into that. And then I also got myself some secondhand books. Um, I got Chill to the Bone by Quentin Bates. Quentin Bates has a lot of translations from Icelandic into English and um, I've never read anything that he has actually written himself and so I was really interested to see what this would be like um, and it's set in Iceland. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Quentin Bates actually lives in Iceland. I think I read a bio that said that he had for like sort of 15 years or something and then I think he moved back to the UK. I could be wrong um, but yeah this is one that I bought partially because I know that Chris really likes murder mysteries set in Iceland and um, I thought he would really enjoy it. But also I think if I'm in a thriller mood, this one will be a good one. Um, but yeah, I'm so, quite rarely in a thriller mood, I'm not gonna lie to you. So I'd be interested to see um, if I get to that or, or what happens. But then I also got myself two um, hardback. I got Unaccustomed Earth, which is like a short story collection. And I was just really drawn in by um, by the blurb, it's about eight stories um, and it's quite a long blurb so I won't kind of 
share it with you um, but it just sounded like really interesting characters that are constructed and interesting narratives and I am really interested to read it myself and see what I think of it. It's got these kind of classic deckled edges which I'm honestly not a big fan of um, but I know that quite a lot of people love that um, but yeah I, I'm looking forward to reading that at some point and then I keep having to remind myself to read more joyful books and more like sweet books or like cozy books or things because I know that it does wonders for my mental health to not just read really heavy books <laughs> um, but yeah so this book is called You and Me Always by Jill Mansell and when I saw it I thought well this looks lovely and cosy and I'm sure that when I was younger I read a Jill Mansell I cannot remember for the life of me the name of it yeah I'm barely sure that I read A Walk in the Park by Jill Mansell and maybe a couple of others but that's the one that kind of sticks in my mind because I remember I owned that book so I kind of consciously <laughs> was aware of it sort of sitting in my bedroom you know what I mean but I think I might have read some others via the library I'm kind of hoping that one of them wasn't this one because I'm not sure it was pre-goodreads pre-bookstagram, pre-all that stuff um, when I was much, much younger. But it's set in Cotswold, it's a romantic story and um, yeah, I just thought it sounded really nice so hopefully I will get around to reading that soon. Um, but it does look a little bit summery so let's see how we get on. But uh, the place I went to, the secondhand bookstore, one of my kind of thoughts when I got in there was that this could be a really good opportunity because I had a voucher for this place and it's um, a place that I really, really like. It's called Boca Gafith and it has a place in Selfoss and also in Reykjavik. And um, yeah, I was just kind of thinking this would be a good opportunity to buy some Icelandic books because I would really like to improve my Icelandic reading skills. And I feel like the best way for me to do that is to read like children's books primarily and to read stories that are familiar to me and things like that so that's my plan that's what I'm planning on doing and I've got some out here which um, I'll show you and just kind of briefly show you and share kind of what they are so I have the story of Tracy Beaker I have Pocahontas which both of which were real childhood favourites of mine so I think they'll be extremely familiar for me and I got a kind of a stretch novel I think but a familiar story and it's Yoko Ogawa's um, The Housekeeper and the Professor um, which I think could be really interesting because it's just short so that could be kind of easier to get into um, or to get through. I'm saying this now, wait till we try it. But but yeah, thinking about the themes and stuff in this, I just thought when I seen it, I thought that would be quite a good one to try and just kind of see if I can understand. And obviously now I've read it, I read this book in English in January. And so it's familiar to me, so maybe that would help me as well. And then I got two books by an Icelandic writer called Andri Snær Magnusson um, and I will read these um, at some point. I think this one will be easier, uh, The Story of the Blue Planet, because it's got a much less text in it and it looks a bit more kind of like child friendly, where this is like, I kind of bought this because it's such a beautiful edition and I thought maybe someday my Icelandic will get to the level where I could read it in, uh, in full. But those are my kind of Icelandic titles that I thought I would at least give a go to um, over the next kind of I don't know, a few months or a year or whatever. Um, I never really share the kind of Icelandic books that I read. When I read them, I don't really have anything to say about them because they're just children's books usually. Um, but hopefully my Icelandic will come on through reading these books. But yeah, so the Icelandic children's book that I got out of the library is one that I've had out for a couple of weeks now. And this is also why I felt like it might be a good idea for me to buy some books because it might be easier for me to kind of take my time with them. But this one's called Loa and it's by Julian Neal, which is not an Icelandic name, but I think it might be translated into Icelandic. Um, but this is kind of more in like a, like, I'm going to say like graphic format in the sense of like graphic novels or something. And I feel like it will be a lot easier for me to kind of follow this story um, and make sense of it because so much um, of language and communication is so much easier when you have a visual to work with as well. So that's what I'm going with. I know that this might seem a bit strange. I've heard some people say that they don't really want to um, read like children's stuff when they're learning a language, but I just think it's it's like one of the best things to kind of get your language skills up. And I also feel like it can be quite joyful to revisit like childhood stuff and like think about these kind of things and like see language from a child's perspective and like play with it. So that's my aim with those things. 
but alongside my high hopes for my Icelandic to come on, um, I do also have some English language books, more for kind of enjoyment rather than learning. But these are all from the library, and the first one um, I got was Dorothy Coombson's The Cupid Effect. I read a short story from Dorothy Coombson in the anthology Who's Loving You? and um, just thought it sounded, just thought it was really good, sorry, and I really liked the way she had crafted characters and stuff, and I really wasn't expecting, from hearing other people talk about Dorothy Kimson's writing, I wasn't expecting to get on with it, so I was really pleasantly surprised. And then when I seen this in the library, I thought, do you know what, I'll give that a go and see what I think of a full novel from Dorothy Kimson. So fingers crossed, I enjoy it, because she does have a lot of books published, which is great. I also got Written in the Stars by Ali Harris, um, which, is kind of like a long like so I recently read Life After Life by Kate Atkinson and it was very much about like fate and like what what kind of destiny you're meant to follow and um the character in that book gets like several chances to relive um scenes in their life and kind of another chance at it sort of thing and I guess this is on a similar theme but it's more like romance based and it's about a woman who um kind of gets knocked out on her wedding day and then she wakes up and there are two alternate realities going on, one in which she gets married and one in which she doesn't. And I think it's like seeing like which one will make her happier kind of thing, like to kind of, it says one decision plus two different paths equals how many happy endings. And it sort of like plays on like the what if. I always find like what if stories really interesting. I always have like even being a ch like a, a teenager or whatever, I've always just found that really fascinating. So yeah, I look forward to picking that up at some point. Um, and then I also renewed my Alone on Trap by Lilia C. with Anne Dottie, um, which I've had out now for a little while. I really need to get to it. I kind of felt like I'd be more likely to read it in the kind of colder months, but I haven't really, um, well, it's only really coming into the colder months now, but also I just haven't felt like picking up a thriller for a little while. Um, but I think this one could be really good because it does have the shorter sort of chapters. Um, you can kind of see here the shortness of the chapters. Um, I think that'll be really good for the winter, maybe when my concentration is not not so good and I just feel like picking something up quickly and putting it down, I'm not sure. Let's find out. And then I also got um, a book called Four Words for a Friend by Marek Kohn. Kuhn. I'm not sure if it's Kohn or Kuhn. And it says, using more than one language matters now more than ever. And I really, I saw this and just thought it sounded really, really interesting and kind of along the kind of thought process that processes that I've been having I guess recently in myself about my um, attempts and my trying to learn Icelandic and kind of the motivation um, for that um, and this here I think captures something really nice it says when we engage with a foreign language however imperfectly we are favouring openness mutual exchange and the sharing of knowledge um, and I just thought that was lovely and I think the author kind of studies languages um through the book and um, talks about like how they're different and like what different languages can tell us about the world um, even such things as them having words for something that aren't available in another language and what that kind of tells you about that society and stuff like that so yeah I was kind of curious about this and I thought I would pick it up and give it a go and I also at the time I mean this, these have been sort of gathering up over a few weeks but at the time I was really feeling like right I need to get my Icelandic game up, up my game and get moving and I went to the library and happened to see this and then I took it home and I thought to myself, Katie, this is just you procrastinating on learning a language. Like, you cannot just read random books about language and expect to learn the language. So it's partially a procrastination, this book, but we'll see how we get on with it. Sorry if I sound like I'm kind of bummed up or something. I think there might be some dust on those books. Um, I feel like I'm going to sneeze constantly at the moment. But another book which I don't have to hand because it's sitting on in our quarantine section of our of our flat is uh, The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, um, who is the writer of The Housekeeper and The Professor, which I have in Icelandic here. Um, but yes, The Memory Police, I'm... Um, got out of the library to buddy read with somebody on bookstagram so i'm looking forward to that and um that's my book haul really i'm excited to read all these books i think i've got what do they say eyes bigger than your stomach for food what have i got then eyes bigger than my brain or something for reading i'm not sure 
I've just made a phrase up now. But um, yeah, so I've got lots of books to read. I'm really much looking forward to them. Let me know if you've read any of these, um, what you thought of them and which you would recommend I start with. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again in my next one.